Big news, Ford Maverick Thunder. And what does it really mean? Now, I've read the Ford Authority article and I'm here to talk to you about that because it's not what you think and it's kind of not what they think. I'm inclined to believe and pretty much know something very different. So we're gonna be talking about the Ford Maverick Thunder. What that? What is that actually going to be? You go through the article and it's a must read. Ford Authority is a fantastic source, but in this instance, um, they're showing us the Ranger and it's led some to believe the Ranger Thunder, which no longer exists. There's something going back a few years. So we've got news. What is the Ford Maverick Thunder really going to be? Is it worth waiting for? How long do you do we likely have to wait for this? Well, I'm going to answer that and a whole lot more. And at the end, let's just talk a little bit about the new Ford Ranger for your must know information. So this is must know information and don't be fooled information on the, well, future Ford Maverick, as well as the upcoming Ford Ranger, so the 2024 Ford Ranger. I'm pretty excited for that. And I'm Johnny from Johnny's Car Care and Reviews. If this is your first time on the channel, please do hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you get all your latest and correct Ford news. So we go through the numbers, we go through the data, and we've got a lot of history that we, you know, we can share here on the channel. Marie's worked at a Toyota as a financial director, so she's doing all the commercial side and financing side of things. And well, I've been in the auto industry, working in the auto industry for about 10 years now, and have been following it closely pretty much my whole life now. So let's just put the pedal right to the metal. Join here for Johnny's Car Care and Reviews, getting you the right news and information. So let's talk about this Thunder patent that was put down for the Maverick. We've seen this before. They've already done it for the Ford Ranger. They've already done it for the F-150. And now they're doing it for the Maverick. Previously, I had said that soon very likely they do this for the maverick and because they're using this name across multiple models there is a very different conclusion to be had here so let's talk about what the assumption is based on one small little piece of history and then we're going to talk about the global you know how ford really does things how they usually continuously use certain names to signify a certain certain things so you know ford has created the has really split the business and now has the model e side of things so they've got their own you know really se separate <laughs> business so they can have their own separate business plan likely also so that they maybe don't have to pay into a pension so i wouldn't be surprised at all the factories that are producing these electric vehicles are going to be you know set up very differently and much more so like tesla so they can be competitive on price, which has been in the news lately, the mach -E is being forced to go down in price. Ford will continue to lose money on that model. But let's keep it to the Ford Thunder right now. What's the direct news? Well, the direct news is they have patented the name Thunder, and they did this on June 27th, 2022, but only published January 24th, 2023. So thank you very much, Ford Authority, for getting us that excellent news. Ford Authority is my favorite and most reliable source of information when it comes to Ford, when it's not, you know, directly from Ford through emails and whatnot. Now, last, uh, last summer I talked about this. They did this for the Ranger. They did this for the F-150. And I was saying they will do this for the Maverick because I really saw it not as some little package like they did in Europe back in about 2019, 2020. So in 2020, 4,500 Rangers in Europe were built as we see behind me. So you can see right here, you've got the red trim, sort of like the Tremor, and you've got the dark wheels. So it's kind of what you could say is more a city version of the Tremor. I really don't see that happening again because that's not what's gonna you know, make Ford more profitable. What's gonna make Ford more profitable and what's really the more important thing for Ford is converting people back to Ford so that Ford selling has a, good, a bigger chunk of, the, of, the, of really the market. They wanna be number one when it comes to electrification. And Thunder is all about being number one when it comes to electrification. I highly, highly suspect, and this is based on a lot of history with Ford, but I'm you know, putting my name on the line here. 
I'm putting my hand on the Bible and one hand up. I'm 99.9% .9 certain this is going to be for some form of electrified Ranger, F-150, and Maverick. So what is this going to entail? What could this look like? Well, it could be actually the 100% electric Ranger and 100% electric Maverick. But then why also patent it for the F-150? Why would you, we already have the F-150 Lightning. Why would you also have something called the F-150 Thunder? Now, I highly suspect that when we take these things into consideration and the fact that Ford wants to be number one when it comes to electrification, Ford's going to do something that Tesla isn't doing and it's really the real future. In my opinion, the best option isn't 100% electric. The best option is plug-in plugins with batteries that can actually take you where you need to go on your daily. Now, the average daily drive is around 30 miles, you know, to work and back. So that's about roughly um, the, the average. In Canada, it's about 42 kilometers to, go work, to work and back, you know, and part of that average, I've got 46 kilometers to go to work and back. A plug-in would be perfect, but you need the Maverick ideally not to have the Escape's 14.4 kilowatt battery. Well, for the Maverick, that could pass. For something bigger like an F-150, you probably want something because of the added weight, something more around 20 to 25 kilowatts. But this would resolve a lot of problems. Right now, the prices on anything that's lithium, anything battery, those prices are skyrocketing because the demand is up here and the supply is down here. So there's a lot of competition for those batteries and it is causing prices to skyrocket on those batteries. And Ford isn't turning a huge profit. If, not, if anything, they're going to be losing money on the Mach-E. The days of being able to make a little bit of money on the Mach-E are over. And what could really help them out? Smaller batteries would still act as an electric vehicle. Let's say the Maverick has a 14.4 kilowatt battery the same way it does for the Escape. And do remember, just recently, the Escape, when it comes to the plug-in, it's now its own trim. It only comes in one configuration, but you can add sort of like a, a luxe high-tech package to it all and, you know, have it have it that way and have it fully loaded but there's no you know with the escape plug-in there's no se sel titanium there's just one model and you decide if you want the high-tech package with it or not so i do so highly highly suspect i'm 100 positive really that we're going to see a plug-in maverick and it's going to have its own name and i'm pretty sure it's going to be under the title of thunder i believe the same thing is going to be occurring for the ranger and I'll bet my name on it. You know, the F-150, they already have the Lightning. That's the all-electric model, while the Thunder would be your partially electric model. So you get the benefit of being able to go to work 100% electric. And you can actually, when you've got those long-haul drives, like we just did, you know, with our Bronco, love the long-haul drive, but would have loved, loved it if, you know, the rest of the time that we own that vehicle would be 100% electric to bring us to work and back, plugging in at home at night. But that we could then still do long trips because the lightning, the sad truth of our lightning that's going to be hopefully in our driveway this coming week, the sad truth is we can't take that machine comfortably down to Florida from Quebec, Canada. We wouldn't even want to take it to, you know, for an eight or 10 hour drive because of the inconvenience based on current charge times. When charge times on all electric vehicles get cut down to, let's say five to max 10 minutes, well, then we're not going to have any issues for doing long hauls with all electric vehicles. But there still remains the problem, major problem, that huge batteries with huge demand and quite a bit smaller supply is having prices of batteries to skyrocket. So how can companies meet CAFE rules that are going to be coming at about 50 miles per gallon as your fleet average? Otherwise, you get penalized and extra taxes, fees, fines, whatever you want to call them. Companies need solutions. You don't want to lose your company because you're losing money on these electric vehicles that you're building. So you need smaller batteries. So the Thunder, you can expect that to be a plug-in. I'm betting my total name on it that Ford isn't just patenting a name so that they can bring out something that looks relatively like a less off-road version and a more street version of 
you know, the Ranger, the F-150, and the Maverick. They already have the ST if they want to do a more street version of the Maverick. Anyways, the ST name is already on a whole bunch of Ford vehicles. It's already well known and very popular to the point where Ford has even divided the ST into then an ST line, which is all your look of an ST without paying extra for the, you know, the more powerful motors. But I really look forward to Ford bringing along plug-in vehicles. That means it's a hybrid that gives you a gas engine as well as an electric engine. The electric engine is ideally used to be 100% electric to get you to work and back home and when you want to take the trip out to the cottage on the weekend or a long trip to seek some sun in the middle of the winter. I'm wearing a coat, right, a coat inside because outside right now it's minus 24 degrees Celsius. So for anyone who's out in the cold right now, I feel for you. For those in Texas, I'm really sorry for what you're going through. And for this reason, I've actually will be producing videos on what if you buy winter tires, but still run them in a warm climate. And that's for everyone down south that can, looks like nowadays, get hit with some pretty severe snow and ice weather. So I want to do some testing. And I've done some testing and those videos are going to be produced relatively soon. So do stay tuned. Uh, I certainly look forward to a Maverick plug-in, but I'm not expecting this, you know, for as a 2024 model. I still think that it makes a lot of sense that Ford gives us these extra plug-ins when they can help alleviate the problem and cost behind currently getting batteries. And those problems are going to be mostly alle alleviated in 2025 and 2026 when Ford gets the Ford Blue Oval City up and running and can be both producing batteries and recycling batteries. So that's gonna be fantastic news for all you Ford fans. We're gonna see some amazing stuff come out of Ford when it comes to electrification, either in the form of hybrid, plug-in hybrid, or all electric. Still a huge fan of the plug-in, so I'm really looking forward to a, hopefully a plug-in Bronco. I expect a plug-in Ranger before then. And I think we can expect a plug-in Maverick probably for roughly as a 2025 or 2026 model year. Now that's a little bit more up in there, but this Thunder utilization of the Thunder name, I really do believe isn't to give us, you know, a Ranger with a, a cute little roll bar, some darkened mags. They can do that by just calling a Maverick an ST. It'd be very popular. It's already very well known within Ford. So people know what to expect when something is labeled ST. But for something like a plug-in and you really want to bring more attention to it, you need to give it a new name. Ford saw it with the Escape. They've got an amazing product in the plug-in Escape and it should be much more popular. There should be much more demand for those. So order one and you're going to get it relatively quickly. Compared to a Toyota RAV4 Prime, in many regions you're looking at years for waiting for one. You can actually get a plug-in escape in relatively decent time depending on the dealer you're probably looking at about currently four to twelve months and those times are going to continue to come down as the supply issues uh, get resolved so i look forward to when it's official talking more about a plug-in maverick i think that's going to be top and for those that want an off-road machine we can't you know we, it's hard to beat the advantages of, let's say, a plug-in Ranger, F-150, or Bronco for going off-road because you can drive to wherever you need to go. For me, it's three and a half hours, really, if I want to do some proper off-roading just to get there. Well, you can use the gas engine, and once you're there, then you can choose to allow the battery to give you all that added torque, instant torque, when you're trying to really crawl around at low speeds. So can't wait to give you more news on this. Do like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that when the information does come out and I can, we can make it official, well, I'll be here to give that all to you. And do keep in mind, I've got a lot of videos on the Bronco that have come out. Now, if you're a fan of the channel, if you follow closely, but you're less interested in the Bronco, well, there's still a little entertainment in those videos as Matthew and I did about 80 hours in the vehicle together. So things got a little um, comical at times and hopefully you'll find those entertaining. It would be much appreciated if you watch. And anytime you watch any of our videos, please just comment, finish her if you make it to them. Thank you so much for sticking with us. And until next time, I wish you all more cars and more power. And we'll see you on our weekly live, which is back on because we're back from the work vacation. 
available Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. Until next time, take care.